Hey guys, this is Anthony Morganti from OnlinePhotographyTraining.com. Welcome to my video series, Mastering Lightroom Classic CC. In this video, we're going to take a close look at the Transform tab that's found in the Develop module of Lightroom Classic CC. Optical lenses will often induce some distortion on our scene. Usually we don't notice it, but if you're taking an image with a lot of strong vertical and or horizontal lines, the distortion is usually pretty obvious. For this image here, you might not notice anything really wrong with the image, but if I open the Crop tool, and in the Crop tool I have this Rule of Thirds overlay, I think you'll start to see the issue. And if I cycle through my available overlays, until I get to this tight grid, I think the problem is a little more obvious. You can see how this larger building on the right is tilted in towards the center of the image. Even the building on this left looks like it's tilted in. Also, all the buildings seem to be falling backwards a bit off the screen. This is very common when you're using a wider angle lens. The further away from the center something is, the more it will tilt back in towards the center. This is easily corrected in camera if you have a tilt shift lens, but most of us can't afford tilt shift lenses, so we rely on the transform tab in Lightroom to collect, correct these issues, and it still is relatively easy to correct. Now the transform tab has two major sections to it. The first part where it says upright is automated. We have these six buttons here, and with those buttons, hopefully you could just one click and correct any issue that is with your image. Below that we have this transform section and that's the manual section. We have a number of sliders and with these sliders we could manually correct any issues in our image. Well, hopefully you could just get away with this automated part at the top. And I'll click this auto button. That's implying that it will automatically fix any issues in the image. Now we have two major issues with the image. I mentioned the buildings are tilted in and they're kind of tilted back. It looks like they're falling backwards. So I'll click the Auto button, and you can see that it did a pretty good job. It appears to have tilted the top part of the image forward, the bottom part backward, which corrected that uh, issue where it looked like the images were, or the buildings were falling backwards. And it also straightened the buildings. Now, I don't think it straightened them perfectly. If I open up the crop tool, I still have this tight grid overlay set. And you can see it's better, but it's not perfect. There's off, there's before, considerable amount of tilt backwards and inwards. And when I click auto, it did a great job with that backward issue, but it's still a tiny bit crooked, but more acceptable. So it does a decent job. I'm going to close down the crop tool there. Now there are some other buttons here that do various automated things to your image. And to demonstrate those, I'm going to jump around from image to image. This next one, Guided, you'll need at least two very strong horizontal lines in your image or two very strong vertical lines in your image for Guided to work. And to demonstrate that, I'm going to pop over to this image. And you can see there's a lot of strong vertical lines. I have the edges of buildings, I have rows of windows, and whatnot. I don't really have much horizontally, but we do have at least two very strong verticals in this image. The guided tool works best when your lines, whether they're vertical lines or horizontal lines, are relatively far apart, meaning you don't want to take this vertical line right here and this vertical line right there. They're too close together. You would prefer to have them close to the edges as well. So a vertical line way over here and a vertical line way over there would work best, or a horizontal line way up towards the top and another horizontal line, horizontal line way towards the bottom, again, works best. To do it, what you'll need to do is turn it on by clicking the guided button or just grabbing the guided tool. The guided tool is right here. And when I click on it, my cursor becomes the tool and you'll see the guided button is now activated. And if you look at the cursor, it's just a set of crosshairs and there's a box there. And that box is really just a uh, big magnification. So you could see exactly 
where you're going to be placing a line that you're drawing on your image. What you need to do is trace along either that vertical or that horizontal. For this image, I'm going to use this vertical right here, the edge of this building, and then I'm going to go way over here and use this vertical over here. Now it actually works best if your vertical lines are real long and, your hor and or your horizontal lines are also real long. So in this case I don't. I don't really have that. So I'm going to go up to the edge of this building and you can see with that magnification window I could get right to the edge of the building. I'll click once with the left mouse button and hold it in, then draw down to the other end of the building and make sure that your crosshair is sitting in a, an equivalent spot vertically on the building. Let go with the left mouse button. Now I have one line drawn. So we'll pop over here and I'm going to do this line. Now I mentioned that it works best if your lines are very long. Unfortunately this line is going to be relatively short, but we'll see what we could do. So I'm going to click once with the left mouse button and hold it in, draw down, go to the other end of my vertical, get my cursor in an equivalent location, and let go of the left mouse button. And you can see then it immediately corrected any vertical issue in the image. Now if you had two strong horizontal lines, you could draw those as well. I happen to have the cursor still active. As soon as I do that vertical, it's still active. You could do the horizontals. You could do two more verticals if you think it would help as well. So you could just keep using the tool and it will keep transforming the image and hopefully make it perfect. Now I think it did a pretty good job. You can see this vertical line is nice and vertical, that vertical line is nice and vertical, and it looks decent. When you're done with the tool, just go back and put it back in its little holder by clicking right there, and you're done. So that's how you would use Guided. Now below that is Level. We're going to jump over to this image for that. This, of course, is an image we used in an earlier episode, and you could see that it's crooked. So I could simply just click Level, and hopefully it straightens it. There's Off, and there's Level. So you could see it straightened it. Now, you may remember that in the crop tool, there's a number of different ways we could level here. Uh, we have the actual level tool. You could click on that and draw along a strong horizontal or vertical like that to straighten the image. Or if you don't want to use the um, level tool, you could just come in here with this, um, this uh, slider and move it around. You also could just click Auto right there, which actually does the same thing that Level does here, just automatically straightens your image. Or you could just kind of come off the image, click with your left mouse button, and straighten the image that way. I recommend that you use the Crop Tool Level tools over this Level tool. It tends to do a better job because you could eyeball it and make sure that it's perfectly level. To me, when I used the level tool here, it didn't seem to level it perfectly. I think the level tool up here would do a better job. Now one thing I want to warn you, there are some instances where you may level with the crop tool, then come down here and hit some automated buttons, and it's going to undo your leveling. There's a way around that. And to demonstrate it, I'm going to just make a ridiculous level here. So it's obvious that I did something up here in the crop tool. I made it super crooked. So let's just say for the sake of argument that for creative purposes, I want this image to be this crooked. Well, if I come in here and click auto, it's, it straightens it out. Well, I don't want that, right? So I'm going to go back to off. I'm going to go back up to my crop tool. I'm going to reset it. I'm going to go back and make it ridiculously crooked again. Now, if I want to correct the other issues the image might have, but I don't want it to correct any leveling I did with the crop tool, hold the Alt or Option key in. It's Alt if you have a PC, Option if you have a Mac. Then click on Auto. It will correct any other issues your image has, but it will not correct for the straightening, or in this case, crookening. <laughs> Is that a word? That I did with the crop tool. So keep that in mind, and you could see that there's a little tip down here telling you to use the option key to preserve anything you've done with the crop tool. 
So I'm going to turn all that off. And I'll reset that just so we're back to normal and we're not looking at it dizzily. So, so far we covered auto, guided, and level. We have vertical. Vertical is, I'm going to go to this image for that. That corrects any vertical issues your image may have. Now we already did auto on this, so I'm going to turn it off. Also, you could reset the two sections. If you double click on the word upright, let's say I have auto on. If I double click on upright, it will reset that. If I had any of these sliders moved, if I double click on transform, it would reset those as well. You also could hold the alt or option key in. It's alt if you have PC option. If you have a Mac and you can see that turns into reset, you could click it once then and that turns into reset. So you could click it once. Now, vertical. If I click vertical, you'll see that it made the buildings not look like they're falling backwards. So we could level it. We could click vertical with those buttons. Auto did more. Auto not only corrected for it falling backwards, it also tried to straighten those buildings as well. Now, fall will correct both any vertical distortions your image has and any horizontal distortions your image has. Often, it will distort the image beyond use, meaning I'm going to click it. And you can see that it often will do something like this. Uh, it corrected verticals and horizontals, but you could see it really distorted pixels. And then we have these white areas up here. To get rid of those, you would click this little checkbox, constrain crop, and then it just crops in until there's no more white. But you could see how this is unusable because it just distorts too much. So full will often not do a good job. You could try it on your image, see what happens. Also be aware that even after you reset it, it will stay cropped. So you're going to have to go to the crop tool and you can see how it stayed cropped and click reset here to bring your image back to its full uh, vertical and horizontal length and width. So that is the automated functionality that is built into the transform tab. There are, you know, numerous um, manual things you could do. This is the vertical uh, slider. This does the same thing like this vertical button did, except you do it manually. So you could tilt it back, make those buildings look like they're falling more backwards off the page, or tilt it forward like that. So they're more straight. Now, when you do that, we get these white lines. Again, if you do this with this constrained crop button checked, it will automatically crop the image so that you could um, render it without that white. Just remember though, when you do that and you undo it and you reset anything, it's going to keep that crop. So you're going to always have to go back up to the crop tool and reset it so you get all your pixels back. Now horizontal, on the other hand, will kind of tilt it left to right. This is what full did. Full tilted it so it straightened out the horizontal and tilted it so it straightened out the vertical but it distorted it so much that it was unusable. So that's what those two sliders do. Rotate does the same thing as level. So we could level it here. Again, I really do recommend that you do any straightening and or leveling with the crop tool. I think you have more powerful tools there to straighten your image than you do using anything in the transform panel. So I'm gonna reset that. Aspect ratio will kind of either scrunch in the sides or draw out the sides. So you could try to, you could see in this image, because there really wasn't an aspect ratio issue, that it's distorting the pixels. But you may find with especially very wide angle lenses, you know, like 10 millimeters, that you start to get some stretching out of things that are towards the outside. And then you could come in here and with the aspect, slider correct any of those issues. A uh, scale, um, once you do that, if you don't want to do constraint crop, you could kind of zoom in that way or zoom out if you prefer. So that's really kind of a crop tool is what that is. So we could reset those. Now X offset will kind of move the whole image to the left when I move the slider to the left and to the right when I move the slider to the right. The x-axis is the horizontal axis. 
the y-axis is the vertical axis. So if I move it to the right, it's going to move the image up. And if I move it down, it's going to move, or to the left, it's going to move the image down. So these are the manual sliders. Tell you the truth, usually auto does a pretty good job. The only thing you'll have to worry about is sometimes auto will make your image crooked. I, I've just run into that now and then. Uh, let's go to this image. It's not going to do it, but I just wanted to show this image. We'll go here. I'm going to totally reset everything and make sure everything's reset by holding the Alter Option key and it's Alter PC option if you have a Mac. Single click on that, single click on that. I'm just going to double check up here that we're not cropped out any pixels. And you could just click Auto and usually it does a pretty good job. Actually, it did kind of make this look a little bit crooked to me for some reason. Then you could come up here and make sure it's nice and straight. But sometimes it does that, I found. So just be aware that auto might make your image look a little crooked at times. Um, guided, you know, I think auto does everything guided does, but you might have an, um, a situation where nothing seems to be working right and try guided. And just remember, I demonstrated it by drawing two vertical lines. You could draw just two horizontal lines, but the best case scenario is you draw two vertical and two horizontal lines, and it will really correct everything in your image, hopefully, and make it look very uh, straight and square. So I think that's pretty much everything you need to know about the Transform tab that's found in the Develop module of Lightroom Classic CC. Thank you, everyone that watches my videos. I truly do appreciate it. I'll talk to you guys soon.